Hi, this is Al Vandervoort of Veritas Homes, and I've got Lorenzo Guaco of Veritas Homes. Hi, Lorenzo. Thanks for joining us today. Always good to, to join in and share some experience. Yeah, yeah. This will be a good one with your background as an appraiser. Um, so let's talk really quickly about um, what's going on in the marketplace. So um, it was interesting to see that San Carlos and Belmont flip-flop situations from last week to this week. So last week, San Carlos had 13 listings and we've dropped to six, super low. Um, in Belmont last week, there were six and now it has jumped to 15. They more than doubled. Yeah, and, and to kind of segue into that, interestingly, we have eight pendings in San Carlos with only two that came on the market. So that's just telling us that um, offer dates were posted after and kind of juggled in between there. Yeah, that, it's moving, moving fast, like how quickly they're getting gobbled up. Um, I think the days on market for San Carlos homes tells an interesting story. Uh, the active list, listings have an average days on market of 45, which means there's some overpriced listings out there that are really bringing that number up. Um, it's pretty high. And then uh, for the homes that are actually pending and in contract for single family homes in San Carlos, the average days on market is just nine. So moving fast. And the great news or the good news or the better news is that we are at a very high for the county inventory, the highest of the year at 384. I think the last for single family residents and the last time that it was that high was early December. So hopefully we're peeking into more inventory. Yeah, heading into that gradual build of the spring. Uh, and the days on market in the county has dropped just a little bit, um, which just shows how, um, how fast the market is moving. Um, so let's go into appraisals. Uh, so Lorenzo, um, you were an appraiser for 11 years. Um, so tell us, uh, what is an appraisal? Yeah, those 11 years were, were fun. We went through the mortgage meltdown and the, uh, ah. a lot of new compliance things that happened. Okay. So there was a lot going on. So an appraisal nowadays, what it means, um, similarly, it means the same as before. However, we're a lot uh, more regulated um, and there's more compliance to follow um, after the mortgage meltdown. So an appraisal is uh, a report, independent report by a, a licensed appraiser here in the state of California that goes out to a property to inspect on behalf of the lender uh, to ensure that the value that the borrower is borrowing from the lender um, is, is appraised accordingly to the purchase price. Okay. And so what is an appraisal contingency? Sure. So that is a contingency, kind of like a safety blanket for the buyer um, and the lender that you can put on as part of your terms in your purchase to ensure that you get back the appraisal in a timely manner and that the offer price you are making um, is the appraised value, which the lender will feel much comfortable uh, lending the money. Got it, okay. Um, so these days we do not see winning offers that have an appraisal mm -hmm. contingency, right? Like there are buyers in competitive markets around here, um, you know, zero out all their contingencies, which we actually had a conversation about that a couple of weeks ago. If you want to learn, learn more about that, you can go check out that video. Uh, so the buyer is taking on the risk that the home will appraise when they remove that contingency. And if it doesn't, um, they will have to come up with the difference between the down payment. Um, there'll be a difference in down payment that they're gonna have to bring in between what it had been if it had um, appraised at the offer price versus what it you know, might appraise as. So can you give us an example, Lorenzo? Absolutely. So let's take $2 million example. The purchase price okay. is $2 million. The buyer offers 2 million. Uh, they are getting a 80% loan which is 80% of the purchase price is at 1.6 million. Now they have a $400,000 down payment. Mm -hmm. um, if the appraisal comes in short at, let's say a million 900,000, the lender is going to give them 80% of that, um, which means the loan will only come out to a million 520,000. Therefore the buyer has to bring in the additional 80,000 shortfall or difference um, for the down payment. So now you're your loan amount or your down payment jumps up to 480,000. Yep, okay, yeah. So gotta have extra cash 
Um, so essentially the buyer has to bring in 80% of the shortfall. I've done this math many times <laughs> and it, you know, if it's a 70% loan to value, then they would have to bring in 70% of the shortfall. So, um, it kind of goes with whatever the, the, um, loan to value uh, percentages loan to purchase, I should say. Um, so in order for a buyer to safely remove their appraisal contingency, they have to have extra cash reserves. Um, so that they can make up the difference. And, um, and it's, this is what part, you know, this is a tough market when, you know, buyers are waiving all their contingencies, but it's especially tough for someone who's limited at 20% down um, because, or even lower, right? And then it's even a harder search circumstance because they absolutely can't waive that uh, appraisal contingency if they don't have any extra cash reserves. They just, the risk is too big, right? To leave that 3% deposit on the line by waiving your appraisal contingency if you truly are capped at 20% down of what your purchase price is. So, um, Lorenzo, in a market like ours where it's competitive and multiple offers are the norm and the bidding goes, you know, above maybe where recent sales are, what are the challenges that the appraiser faces in trying to get it to appraise for the price that they're seeing there on the purchase contract? And just to be clear, the appraiser gets a copy of the purchase contracts. They, so they know what they're trying to get it to appraise for. Correct. And nowadays with um, the new the guidelines and regulations, there's no interaction between the lender and the appraiser because that was um, a lot of pressure back when um, lenders were the clients of the appraisers. Yeah. So there's a, a lot of challenges going on and we, um, not to jump too much on the sales side, but we obviously try to mitigate that with our buyers, whether that be looking at lower priced homes. So there's a little bit of uh, padding. Um, yeah. Underwritten loans now are the, are the norm um, to be fully underwritten to help mitigate any um, shortfalls there. Um, but on the appraiser side, there's a whole slew of challenges. The, what we are seeing is you may be making an offer on a, on a property that is setting the precedent for that neighborhood and setting the highest comp. Um, so what- Which is very likely in our market right now. Which is very likely. Um, and I think that's pretty much the norm as well. So what appraisers can do, and I haven't done a report since 2014, so they may have uh, more tricks or more leverage with technology and, and data. Um, however, they can only use closed sales and the best closed sales are within 30 to 90 days. Okay. Now, if you have to pull further in certain instances where there's no comparables, so the appraiser had to go outside the, the natural boundaries to find comparable properties in the neighboring city that could be uh, used as well as, as data. And the, the appraiser really has to speak with the listing agent and the listing agents, please be very transparent with the appraisers because it's very helpful. Um, if there was 10 offers received all above 1.9, for example, but the best comp is at 1.8, they have to use that data um, and maybe throw it into an addendum and saying that um, the trends are, are showing that there was willing buyers to make offers above 1.9 and then maybe do something like what is called a time adjustment where the best comp was 30 days ago, but as of today, with the time adjustment, um, the increase in value could be 1% or 2 or 5 or whatever the case is. Okay. So it, it, I don't have firm data to tell you how they can make that happen, but they just have to dig a little bit deeper um, in, in regards to the, what's, what inventory has sold and interviewing other agents, whether it be a pending sale as well. Um, okay. Although closed sales have the biggest weight on appraisal reports, but pending sales with information could be very helpful in supporting value. Yeah, I mean, we, when we're writing offers for buyers, you know, we, some of the most useful information we can get is from listing agents who have pending sales, who will share with us information as far as how many offers did they receive and, you know, if we can, if they can share where, about where it's going to close, right? That's super helpful for us as far as giving our buyers the best guidance for where to write, but the appraisers are more confined to what has actually closed. Absolutely. And I just want to add that appraisals uh, are opinion of value. So they, 
based on experience, maybe that's, you know, 10 years, five years, or, or what area they cover or their geographic area. Now appraisers are only allowed to go, I believe, within 20 uh, square miles or radius miles. Um, and again, these are just opinions, just like I'm sharing my opinion, um, and every appraiser has different tactics or ways to come to that reconciliation, that value. Yeah, that's one of the things, that's a great point, Lorenzo. And one of the things that we, you know, talk with our clients about is that, you know, as a buyer, if you've been out there competing in offers, you know, you've really got a sense of value. Um, we lost you on video, but I'm guessing you're still there. Um, but there we go, you're back. Um, but, um, you know, they, they get a real sense of where they feel comfortable with value. And, you know, part of that talking through like, the comfort in waiving your appraisal contingency is like, are you comfortable with, you know, this price and can you see how value is here? And then it's a little bit less of a shock when a, an appraisal comes back short. It doesn't happen very often, but buyers need to be psychologically prepared if there is a shortfall and obviously financially prepared if there's a shortfall in the appraisal. Absolutely. And it's all about planning. I think the, the most successful buyers and sellers are those who plan out thoroughly. Well, awesome. Thank you, Lorenzo. Um, thank you for uh, joining us and sharing your expertise as a, a real estate appraiser and your, as part of your background. So everyone have a wonderful weekend and we'll see you back here next, uh, next Friday. I'm Val Vanderbort of Veritas Homes. Uh, Lorenzo Guayco, Veritas Homes. Happy Friday. Great weekend. Yeah. And we're here for you for your real estate needs. Happy to help. Bye everyone.